Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the July 1st, 2021 Hillsborough Planning Board uh, meetings. Um, well, I don't have to go through the regular announcement of saying this is being done virtually, so. It is. They don't want to know. We're actually here virtually. Yeah. That's it. So we can go right to the salute to the flag. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Please be advised this meeting has been duly advertised according to Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, <clears throat> otherwise known as the Sign Chung Law. Notice of the 2021 annual meeting schedule has been provided to the officially designated newspapers. The township clerk posted on the township's website and available at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Building Complex. Further notice has been provided <clears throat> to the saying that as of July 1st, 2021, the remainder of the 2021 Planning Board meetings will be held in person at the Peter J. Biondi Mill Building. Live virtual participation will no longer be available. And <clears throat> in addition, uh, application documents have been made available on the township's civic clerk website. Complete application files are available in the planning and zoning department for inspection in accordance with the public meetings notice. And with that, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Wagner? Here. Mr. Peason? Present. Mr. Santa Romita? Absent. Mr. Scobo? Here. Mr. Hashtag? Absent. Mr. Ciccarelli? Here. Mr. Emick? Here. Uh, Mayor Delcourt? Deputy Mayor Delcourt? Yeah. Sorry. I'm going to get promoted. Not the, 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 don't offend what, the Was there a coup while we were away? Uh, I, am, I am here. I'm very happy to be back uh, live. Mayor Lapani? Proud to be here. Yes, thank you. Uh, Vice Chairman Julian? Here. And Chairman Sirachi? Here and welcome back, everybody. And yeah, to continue. Mr. Maskey's here, Mr. Bernstein is here, and I am here, and Kaz is here. Perfect. Tina, did you call Mr. Santa Marita? Yeah, I did. He's absent. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, again, welcome back, everybody, to in person. And, um, you know, <clears throat> leave it. Uh, I guess to the irony of the whole situation, we have something unusual this evening that we have an executive session first on the agenda. So um, I guess I need to have a motion to move into executive. I'm asking Mr. Chairman to go into executive session pursuant to the provisions of NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12 B7, which is attorney client privilege and pending or anticipated litigation regarding campus associates. Uh, I would ask for a motion and a second to go into executive session. I would also ask that we stay here and ask the public to depart rather than trying to crowd ourselves into the back room. Why is everyone looking at me for this session? Oh. <laughs> Why don't you just all stand against the wall? I would be a lot of public. I think we're going to. I might suggest we, we do it the other way. So yeah. I'll make a motion to uh, go into executive. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Can we do it by affirmation or do we have to do a roll call? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We, we will, will be back in oh. hopefully about. 20 minutes okay, just formal before. action will probably not be taken after the executive session but the record reflects like mr hashtag is here uh but there will be further action later in the meeting okay, okay. all right so everyone you can stay here we're going to go in the back for a little bit and we'll be right back just in time okay <clears throat> we're out of executive sessions do i need to do a yes, i need a motion to come out of executive yeah. session mr chairman Make a motion to come out of executive session, Mr. Chairman. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Let the record reflect that all members of the planning board present commence the executive session are present the recommencement of the open session, as well as planning board attorney, the director of planning, the, and all the members of the board who were present during the conversation. The board was given an update on the ongoing litigation matter involving campus associates and the status of same. 
no formal action as to that discussion, Mr. Chairman, needs to be taken at this time. There is a matter, there is a related matter on the agenda for later this evening to be addressed regarding the application. Uh, at this point, Your Honor, we can turn to the regular order. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so next in the agenda, we do not have any consideration of meeting minutes. We do have a number of resolutions. First up is Hillsborough 206 Holdings, file number 19-PV-24-S dash dash slash MSPV. May I have a motion to approve. The eligible members are Mr. Wagner, Mr. Scobo, Mr. Ciccarelli, Mr. Emick, Mr. Opani, Mr. Julian, and Mr. Soraki. Thank you. <coughs> motion. Thank you. Second. Okay, we have a motion second. Any comments from the dais? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Scobo? Yes. Mr. Ciccarelli? Yes. Mr. Emmett? Yes. Mr. Lamani? Yes. Mr. Julian? Yes. Yes. Next up, Sun Power Corporation, uh, commonly known as Comcast Cable. File 20-PB-02-SPV. Dash 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 uh, who are the eligible members? Uh, I would point out to the board that this is not a misprint. There are two different resolutions, one for the 2020 application, one for the 2021. For the 2020 application, the eligible members are Pete, Ciccarelli, Emick, Delcor, Lapani, and Julian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Second. Okay, any comments from the dais? Hearing none, roll call. Mr. Beeson? Yes. Mr. Ciccarelli? Yes. Mr. Emick? Yes. Mr. Delcor? Yes. Mr. Lopani? Yes. Mr. Yes. Okay, and the next one is the second Sun Power Corporation Comcast Cable. Same file number, but with 2021 suffix. The eligible members for this resolution, Mr. Chairman, are Mr. Wagner, Mr. Peason, Mr. Scobo, Mr. Ciccarelli, Mr. Emick, the Mayor, the Vice Chair, and yourself. Thank you. May I have a motion? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Comments from the dais? I do have a question. Okay. And maybe it's um, more for Mr. Maskey that when I remember this application, there was a discussion about landscaping along Sunny Mead Road and them installing landscaping along the edge of the road. I see in here a condition that says the applicant will <coughs> consider revising the plan to include landscaping. Did, does, did that meet your intent, Mr. Maskey? Like, well, have, you, have you worked with them? Or the they next step would be for them to come through a compliance review. So whatever it says in the resolution, we would make sure that they're complying with it. Okay, so are you, are you fine with this language, the way it's written then? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, any additional comments? Okay, hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. Beeson? Yes. Mr. Scobo? Yes. Mr. Ciccarelli? Yes. Mr. Emmett? Yes. Mr. Lamani? Yes. Mr. Julian? Yes. Mr. Sarachi? Yes. And our last resolution of the evening is Hillsborough Board of Education, Sunny Mead School <coughs> Parking Lot, file 21-PB-07-INF. May I have a motion to approve? So oh, wait, sorry. sorry. The eligible I get the members are Mr. Peason, Mr. Hestag, Mr. Ciccarelli, Mr. Emmett, Deputy Mayor, the Mayor, and Chair. Thank you. And Mr. So Peason, Mr. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Second, anyone? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Comments? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Peason? Yes. Mr. Hestag? Yes. Mr. Ciccarelli? Yes. Mr. Emmett? Yes. Mr. Delcor? Yes. Mr. Lamani? Yes. Mr. Sorrenti? Yes. Moving on to planning board business. A couple of quick items. First one is one of our favorite topics, JSM at Hillsborough LLC. File 20-PB-09-MSPV. Surprise, they're looking for another extension, except this time through October 29, 2021. Here lies the problem. They are scheduled to be before you next week. Uh, I am not aware that you can continue the application tonight for an application that has ostensibly been noticed for next week. 
they will be in, they do want another extension, you have to grant it, the issue whether you're going to require them to re-notice, etc. Uh, I'll be more than happy to tell Mr. Wilson he needs to make an appearance. But I don't believe that the board can take an action tonight for an application to be heard next week. Could the board authorize somebody to take that action on their behalf? I don't believe the board can no. authorize somebody to take it. You have all had five minute meetings before. Yeah, but we did them from home. Yeah, well, <laughs> oh. talk to the American committee. Uh, so, <laughs> can I say, why October? I, I, Mr. I Wolfson was very clear that his client would be ready to uh, bring this application I forward. Think, I think that is a question that you can use for Mr. Wolfson to answer. Uh, I am aware of some issues that I am not at liberty to discuss at this time relative to some ideas they have, but I think he's the perfect person to answer that question. <coughs> would it be not perfect to when we see them next week and they request that extension that we don't schedule another date until they actually submit all the documents well, and that's then a, that's, we another, that's another option um, that you don't set a date but you basically set the date by the extension for the decision time decision okay. but as I said I, would, I think that's a conversation you should have with them. so can I make a motion we table this till next week yeah you need a motion to table oh we just we, just, we don't need to do anything. Okay. Okay. And I will break the good news to the former judge on the way home tonight that he's got to come next week. Okay. Speed dial is number one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which well, people? In my life. Well, a couple of people have had a couple of people. I think you're you're one, Mayor. He may be two. <laughs> you two are two and three. My wife is one. I would think so. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, which gets to the second item, which was about next week's agenda, and as we already just <coughs> Eric hinted, it's going to be a five-minute meeting because that's the only item on the agenda. There is an outside chance, and I use the word outside, that there may be a resolution on, but I would say outside. So we'll point. take six minutes. Depends on how long you want to grill. There's, well, there's only actually with the adoption of the evening's resolution, there is only one outstanding resolution. Right? Okay. Well, just so, when does his current extension expire? The end of the month. October 29th. No. 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 He's request, they've submitted a form requesting an extension to October 29th. No, but the current. Yeah, the end of the month. Like yes, the end of this month. The end of well, July. July? Or was it yesterday? Or June. June. Yeah, I think it was yesterday. Yes. June. So it's July. Right, Whichever July month it is. Mm -hmm. oh, probably July, you're right. It is July. July 1st today. I forget this is now July. Yes, okay. it is July, it's not June. Okay. Well, okay. In the matter okay. of June, there were no applications. It therefore couldn't be approved because there isn't any. Mm -hmm. okay. So hopefully there's five of us that will be here next week. Okay. Let's try. Okay. All right. So with that, <clears throat> we're moving on to business from the floor for matters not on the agenda. So... So there's anyone that would <coughs> like to address the planning board about any items that are not this evening's agenda you can come forward okay that's why I kind of figured I figured <coughs> we're going to move on then to last part considerations of ordinances this evening <coughs> we have an ordinance in front of us ordinance 2021-12 it's an ordinance to amend revise supplement chapter 188 Land Use and Development, Article 5, District Standard, Section 188-106, L-1, L-2, L-3, Light Industrial Districts, most notably Section 188-106H, entitled Multifamily Inclusionary Overlay District of the Hillsborough, uh, of the Township Code of Hillsborough. And I don't know, Eric, do you want to provide a overview I, I of this would, i would first like to point out to the members of the board that this ordinance is before you not for your approval or disapproval it is relative to the issue of whether or not it's consistent or not consistent with the master plan and with other actions as governing the governing body in the township have taken regarding the site in question so let's start with that okay the vote on this is not your um that you will support the ordinance or are merely making recommendations regarding saying this comes out of 
Judge Shanahan's decision uh, last month in which he basically found that the township had not done the appropriate items relative to the board had not and the township committee had not related to the settlement agreement between campus associates and the township and the related zoning ordinance that went with it. The ordinance ostensibly before you would revise the existing zoning ordinance to allow for, to, to eliminate two provisions that made up the basis for the planning board's decision to deny the application, the stream corridor issue and the downstream pipe study. Uh, and that's what's in the ordinance tonight. Um, if David has anything else he wants to add. Nothing to add. So would it be fair to say that the judge essentially was in agreement with why we denied it and that's why he's asking for those provisions to be amended out of the no, ordinance, the or out of the zone? not agree to what you all decided. The judge disagreed vehemently with what you all decided um, and therefore is telling you that you are to that the township is to create an ordinance that ostensibly creates this as an as of what, what they call an as of right application with no waivers and variances. Right. Now, words to make it conforming. I'm sorry. And we to make it conforming. Make it conforming. Right. So. Yeah. I'll say it was implied, maybe not explicit. My opinion. Um, um, did the judge read, your, read the transcripts? Like, did he, in deciding his vote? And he was aware. So he saw our court master providing some of that the guidance. Master, the court master took no position on the... No, 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 she didn't. But I know there was some, I think there was some um, there were questions or there were asking questions about... Answer. We provided briefing. His Honor right. had a rather extensive set of briefs and exhibits. He engaged in a rather lengthy oral argument for a traditional motion practice, and the decision is rather lengthy for a Superior Court judge to come out on a, on a motion record. Uh, so His Honor did review all the items and the obligations, right. understood the board's decision, and basically said the township had obligations. And it wasn't just Campus Associates as the only party, I just... Well, Campus Associates brought the original motion to enforce litigants' rights. Fair Share Housing Center, which has a seat at all the tables, had comments regarding that they had suggested that the townships be stripped of its immunity, as did Campus Associates. His Honor spent a good piece of the decision discussing why it shouldn't and why he wouldn't. And just for clarification, stripping of immunity would have what impact on the township? Would have left the township subject to build a remedy potential applications at that site and possibly others which would then have increased the number of affordable housing units in town as well as market rate units and possibly expanded the existing development on the campus associate site. Okay. Any additional? Questions, comments? Okay, so make a motion to open the public. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So if anyone from the public would <coughs> like to comment on this ordinance consideration, you know, please come up to the microphone. State your name and address for the record. I, work, I live and work at 166 Johansson. Um, I had a question. I, I guess we were trying to see the court transcripts to kind of get an understanding and read through and see what happened. Um, what was the reason that the judge decided to change the buffer or to decide not to to accept the 50 foot and not demand the 150. What was his reason? Okay. And what is the town doing to help with this on our side? Okay. Those are my questions. Okay. Anyway. The judge reviewed the 
agreement between the parties and the zoning that was in place, which ostensibly called for a 50-foot buffer, um, and accepted also the fact that the generally standard from the DEP is a 50-foot buffer. Um, did you hear that? So, so essentially, the, 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 so essentially, the judge accepted the DEP's 50-foot buffer as the uh, standard over our 150-foot buffer. It's essentially, a, what happened. You, you have to come forward yeah. if you want to ask questions. I think she wants to know what actions she is going to take. Right. We denied it. My, my second question is, um, what is the town doing to help us with this, or is there any recourse from the town now? All right. Well, Eric, do you want us to, I guess, state what the judge ordered the township to do, essentially? Township was advised in the court order that it had 45 days to adopt a conforming ordinance in pursuant to the settlement agreement between the township and campus to create what, as I indicated earlier, was an as-of-right application with no waivers and variances. The township's failure to do so leaves the township open to a builder's remedy claim and additional damages and sanctions beyond what the court has already ordered as a potential requirement regarding the same. And, and loss of immunity. On the loss of immunity, which would leave you then open to a builder's remedy claim by both campus associates and any other applicant within the township who wants to build. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we didn't lose immunity. Is the um, the downstream study is is anyone doing that now, or is that just no one? Uh, it is not. We cannot request it. Not from the applicant. Okay. So, yeah. So the issue is we we can't force the applicant to do it. So we, we will, uh, it, we may have to uh, see how we can undertake that in a different way, but we can't require uh, the applicant to do it and make adjustments to their application as a result of that. It would have to be done in a different way. And that's not to say we can't, um, but, but we can't require it of the applicant. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Messina, Five Holy Road, Hillsboro. Do you know if the catch basins were included in any of the plan? There is stormwater management in in the plan. No, no, catch basins. Everything was below grade. Excuse me. Oh, everything's below grade. Don't you think that makes it worse then? It is. It is it's. It. I know. Listen. I know you guys' hot arms are tied by litigation. I understand all that. But we're dying here. I mean, the past two giant storms. We're isolated for, for three, four days at a time with no power, helicopters flying over, dropping water. Mm -hmm. Mr. Scobo knows, I mean, he was in the area. Mm -hmm. And then the next storm came, and that was even worse. I just don't understand the building. Our, our neighborhood was built in 1955. Whoever planned that neighborhood did a great job for 1955. I mean, the storm sewers for 1955. But now things changed. When he built the campus, the uh, court, I forget what they're called, those brick buildings on 206, they built that giant, they put the storm soon here. That's, I guess, is the one that they're going to be using. But it's not going to help anything. This impervious stuff is just going to kill us. I mean, I just don't want to be stranded again. And my wife wanted to tell you guys that we don't want to be known as the lost valley of Manville. Okay? I know your hands are tied, litigation is tough, but just please do the best that you can for us. Because what else can we do? This judge, obviously, he just read the law, incorporated the law. That was it. You don't look, I don't think you look any further than that. So that's all I have to say. Do the best you can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, or good evening. My name is Chris Golis. I live at 128 Johansson Avenue. I'm a correctional police officer with the Essex County Department of Corrections. Uh, my family and I. We moved into the neighborhood 2010. Um, since then, 
Thankfully, the, the water hasn't gotten bad enough to get into our home, but half of our backyard always gets covered with, with water. My backyard um, directly bumps up to the Stellar, is that the Stellar Academy behind us? Mm -hmm. And I have two 24 inch cement pipes that dump water into my backyard. So with that property being built up there, and I'm downstream from it, and I've already seen the water coming down my neighbor's driveways, it's just gonna make things worse, right? And fellas, it's not so much for us, but it's for them that we're building this town to be the best place to live in America. Uh, my name is Sharon Baragi, 133 Taylor Ave. I've lived in Green Hills for 60 years. Uh, my aunt and uncle were original owners. My parents came shortly after. Um, I've watched flooding get worse every time something's built, especially along 206. I have friends who live on the other side of our neighborhood, and when the Cortland development was built, it caused terrible <coughs> flooding to them on the Manville side. We're always told that they're going to remedy flood problems and it's actually going to make it better every time they make an improvement. It gets worse every single time. My aunt and uncle at 122, Joe Hansen, used to live near the storm swale that they covered over, and I bailed water out of the back of their house several times. In all the years they lived there, it had no water until the courtyard development was built. So. I think you guys really have to fight this a little more. Good evening, uh, Mary Ann Soade, 142 Johansson Avenue. How are you? Great. You're welcome. I have been speaking out in opposition of the proposed development by Campus Associates. The petition I started to impose this development has almost 3,000 signatures, and it continues to grow. Myself and others have written letters appealing to the Judge Shanahan, asking him to reconsider his decision that was rendered in favor of the developer. The evidence and concerns that we have provided during this process had led the Planning Board to deny the campus, campus application with a reasonable basis. Based on the concerns of the increased flooding in our flood prone neighborhood. I had thought that since you had denied the application, that you may have had a good plan to defend your decision in Superior Court. But we seem to be in a worse place now than we were before, with uh, Hillsborough having to pay all of these fees and uh, in an undetermined amount. Do we know how much? Not yet. But just to be clear, it, that's. I, I, I'm, you're there and we there was an understanding that you know if we lost there would be uh, we, we may have some some fees that would come out of the trust fund that doesn't come out of uh, we would expect that that doesn't come out of taxpayer funds just okay. I just want you to understand that okay that. Um, it just feels like there's something very wrong here how the judge could make that type of decision um, I wasn't able to get a court transcript just to see what had transpired but um, I think you already answered what information Hillsborough provided to um, to the judge in defense of your decision. You did provide what we had talked about about the flooding, and he didn't care. He, I think, as Mr. Bernstein said, he read all the transcripts. So okay, he but had he was just bound to the legal agreement that was signed. And that's his view, and and uh, you know, with any. E or DEP regulations. <clears throat> yeah, that was his decision to go with the states as the uh, as the gold standard versus what I think we had a very good standard here, and it wasn't put into place, you know, right. because of this ordinance. I mean, it was in place for years well before this. But uh, yeah, and, and as we know, most of the time with with the Wayfair Share Housing, the way affordable housing is going. Um, the primary and only goal is to get affordable housing in. Right. So, yeah. I know in one of the um, times we spoke, I had looked up, uh, I was reading the statutes in DEP, in DEP's uh, statutes, and it said that theirs is a minimum recommendation and that it is up to each municipality to decide what their town needs. So, 
going with a minimum and not taking into consideration what the local area needs is um, irresponsible of them. Um, I think the issue is, uh, I can't say I disagree with you. I, th I think the issue is that Chairman was starting to get to is that um, everything else takes a backseat to, to affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are. And, and I know you've heard me say this, and I'll say it again. It's, it's where the courts have mandated we go, and the, the courts are falling in line that if this is the way that the uh, agreements are uh, initially set, that nothing's going to stop the affordable housing process from moving forward. I, I have been trying to understand how this proposed development was included in the first place uh, to satisfy the obligation, especially considering its history and continued objections from neighbors over the years. Um, I feel like it should never have been on the list of projects needed to satisfy this obligation. Um, how did it get there? May I? If you want to go, I'll love Campus Associates was one of the nine interveners in the lawsuit against the township, including Fairshire Housing. They have been seeking to have their uh, project included into the project since 2015. And actually, they had prior applications for affordable housing on the site in the previous round that never occurred. The situation involving the application became a balancing issue. Failure to come to an agreement with them would have left the township potentially open to a builder's remedy claim, a non-conforming situation, no settlement agreement with fair share housing, and a lot more litigation and a lot more housing in, in Hillsborough Township than we currently got agreements for which was still not insignificant. Um, township committee had to make certain decisions. They were not happy ones. None of this process was particularly uh, happy. No, I won't say happy. It was agreeable to the committee. There were a number of discussions over the years before we came to settlement. Um, but they weren't going away and the situation of failing to go away and failing to resolve the issue was significantly more problematic township-wide than just this project. Uh, the committee had to take a look at all the projects and all the situations, and there are projects all over town that the township committee has in the plan, and there were potentially others. And the committee had to make decisions that impact impacted some properties to the exclusion of others, which probably would have been more problematic down the road than just this one. So that's how so. Campus Associates got included. They got themselves in the mix when the Supreme Court rendered its decision back in 2015, and they have been pushing their development ever since. So um, Tillsboro did submit a plan that was um, provided to the courts at some point and they decided it wasn't enough or they Hillsborough wanted to add more? Hillsborough had numerous, more than I can choose to remember, conversations with not only all of the interveners but most importantly Fair Share Housing Center, which is an advocate for the affordable housing community and the special court master over this property and a number of others. Um, there were clear attempts to exclude it. There were clear attempts to exclude other properties. Um, all of the interveners, since one, got into the project, got into the, pro into, the, into the mix at the insistence of fair share, at the insistence of the obligations found, as per the calculations done by Judge Jacobson's decision in the West Windsor and Lawrence cases, and as per the court master. So, the number could have been significantly larger than the number we, we ultimately had to agree to. It could have been significantly worse if we had lost our immunity. Ask South Brunswick, ask Englewood Cliffs what that life is like. 
Um, and you can ask, you know, from 20 plus years ago, Hillsborough too. Lost its Both immunity in and, town and, and lost its immunity and ended up getting projects that I'm not so sure anybody, you know, you all heard me say this, my favorite affordable housing project in all of Hillsborough came in the last round. Uh, it has a home goods and the lows and it's called Hillsborough Promenade and that's what you all got out of all of that got out of the last round was that so we at least got affordable housing out of this one which we had an obligation to build as is Mr. Delcor and Mr. Lapani have said numerous times at township committee meetings in here these are balancing acts folks and until such time as the legislature steps up and does what it's supposed to do, which is address the issue and the requirements under the Fair Housing Act, the courts have been left with no other alternative but to become interveners in this situation and to address the situations accordingly. And any town that has chosen to basically ignore its obligation has done so at a significant risk. Um, that's why out of 320 towns, only three of them lost their immunity. And I happen to right now represent one of the three, and I can tell you it's a daily grind just to get through what we dealt with with significantly less obligation than you all have. So every decision was difficult, every discussion was difficult. Yep. I, didn't, I didn't have gray hair when it started. Um, is there another? Uh, I think, I, yeah, I, I, I think I, he was on a roll. I think he's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, was there any point that this project could have been removed? I guess it's mute at this hmm. point, but. Well, because we, they came to you in a litigation. The, the, the answer, Ms. Wade, is we tried everything. So, Wade to get it out of the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to obviously divulge conversations, but I think Mr. Lapani and Mr. Delcor will concur that we did not exactly roll over and say, oh, this is an absolutely wonderful situation we should have in this plan at all costs. And we tried very hard to find a way to keep it out, and keeping it out came at a significantly higher cost than the township believed it could afford. Okay. Um, so in 2008, the Board of Adjustment denied the application from the same developer for the zoning ordinance needed in order to develop this property, also for affordable housing, as you mentioned. Um, none of those reasons have changed. They include, the Board is not convinced the tenants uh, of the proposed apartments, particularly children, would be sufficiently safe because of the proximity to a major high-speed multi-lane highway, lack of alternate access to and from the property, and lack of recreation. The board is concerned that neighboring properties will be negatively impact impacted by the relief requested since the neighboring properties are in a flood zone. The board is concerned the neighboring properties could be negatively impacted by increased sanitary sewer problems. The board believes the proximity of large areas of wetlands are not a healthy environment for residential use. The board recognizes the need for additional affordable housing in the township, but is not satisfied that this property is the appropriate site for affordable housing. The board is not satisfied that meeting the present affordable housing needs outweighs the possible health hazards, environmental issues, and the safety of the tenants and surrounding owners. So this is um, this is history that should be shared with the judge. This is. This no. has not changed. Now, the Mr. Chairman, was it? Yeah. Yeah. There are two very different issues from the Zoning Board's decision to now. One, luck, and two, failure. The luck was that we were in between the periods where the courts were determining how to impose round three and four of the co-obligation, which is now in existence, courtesy of Justice Lavecchia's decision in 2015. So there was no mandatory obligation, though there was, but there was no truly mandatory obligation to build affordable housing in 20, 2008, though Hillsborough was a court town at the time. Second was failure, failure by the applicant to appeal the zoning board decision that I'm not so sure would have survived 
on an appeal to the courts for whatever reasons, and by the way, it was an issue we raised multiple times in the conversations as to why they didn't pursue that application 12 years ago in the courts. And I think those who were present would indicate we didn't get a particularly satisfactory response to that question. So I would say that while the situation may or may not have changed, the fact that it didn't get built in 2008 was a combination of luck and failure. And probably would have been built if certain things had been done 12 years ago and we wouldn't be having this conversation. We'd be having other conversations, but not this one. Okay. Isn't the key difference too is that the, that was the zoning board of adjustment and now it's a conforming plan? Well, it was, it, in reality, in I, that still, decision I, I, I still haven't gotten an answer to this question was, considering it was affordable housing then, why they didn't push the issue either before this board or with the court. And when I asked the applicant that question multiple times, I got the same look I'm getting right now from most of you. The blank stare and the non-answer, not because, you get, because they couldn't explain it. There was another layer to it, just, just quickly. Uh, I remember reading the decision. The applicant was not the owner of the property at the time. It's a contract. contract purchaser. Yeah. For whatever reason, it was turned down, and the applicant, I don't remember their name, they decided to walk. The, um, the owner appealed, and it was found that they had no standing because they weren't the applicant. And that was the end of the story. Which I'm not sure was correct either, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I feel that uh, needs to be said, but please allow me to just give you a timeline of flooding. It's not very long of the neighborhood, as we call it by many neighbors, in relation to development and the um, flooding issues. Uh, 1956, Green Hills is built and there's no flooding. 1962, Village Green off Brooks Boulevard is built and its drainage is directed to the ditch that runs along the western rear of the Johansson Avenue properties. The Green Hills residents fought this proposal with the township allowed the redirection of the runoff. The township claimed the additional water from Village Green will keep the ditch clean of debris. Between 1962 and 71, there was major flooding on Johansson with up to two feet of water at the dip in the road on the southern end of the street. Cars would stall in the water and become stranded in, in the street even during minor, minor rainstorms. 1972, Hillsborough floats bonds for $1 million, most of which will be used to put in street storm sewers and direct their drainage to a new 42-inch pipe that would run along the western boundary. The drainage system is built and the flooding stops. Then in 1977, the Courtyards development is built. Some say there was increased flooding on Johansson Avenue and Kimberly Road. Up until 1986, the system worked as designed and there was no increased flooding. Then in 1986, Harvard Way was built and an oversized attention pond at the request of the township was built that will drain into the Green Hills drainage system via the 42 inch pipe. Minor flooding starts to appear during heavy rains along the ditch on the western boundary. 1988, 206 is widened by 20 feet, increasing the impervious coverage bordering the property. 96, St. Mary's Brooks Boulevard, Hillsborough, directs their drainage into the system via the township-owned wetlands. 99, Tropical Storm Floyd, Hurricane Floyd. There's massive flooding along the entire length of the western boundary. The pipe fills to its maximum, and street flooding appears similar to 62 on the southern end of Johansson. Residents were isolated and couldn't get out of the neighborhood, much like an island, and evacuated from their homes, and the sewers also backed up. 2007, there was a storm with flooding on Kimberly. 2008, Stellar Academy is built, and it directs all its drainage into the same pipe. During minor storms, the street faults on Johansson fill to the rim, ominously foreseeing what will become the norm. 2010, Nor'easter in March caused major flooding on Kimberly and Johansson. And then finally, 2011, during Hurricane Irene in August, the southern part of Johansson flooded, the street storm sewers at the top of Kimberley backflow and a small river flows down Kimberley. Some residents claim they had seven to 10 feet of water in their homes and they were forced to evacuate. Again, the residents were unable to leave the neighborhood. So, you know, at this point we understand the history 
and what's going on with the flooding um, and our stormwater system. It's not functioning as designed. It wasn't designed to take on all this water. Um, so if this thing has to go through, which we don't want it to, but if it did, then it really, really needs to be addressed, the stormwater system. It needs to be redesigned. I mean, I, I know that would be very expensive, but it has to be found somewhere. If it has to go through, um, I don't know if um, I asked the judge in my letter to him if there was some way that Hillsborough and the campus can facilitate some kind of an agreement to, you know, address that issue. Because that may, that would certainly help. Um, but that's, that's my point of um, reading you the timeline of flooding. Uh, it's very relevant. It's evidence of what's going on. And any more water being directed to that pipe would be a disaster. The flooding problems are real. They will only be made much worse. And that's not to mention all the water absorbing trees and plants that will be removed completely from that site. The property currently does not drain into the system now, and there is a major problem with redirecting it. The whole situation is just illogical, irresponsible, and a complete disregard for the safety and welfare of the residents in the area, as well as the potential new residents. This is not a matter of if we will have worsened flooding. It's a matter of when and how much. My house is never flooded for the record. If you, if you approve the developer's application along with its new terms in the ordinance before us tonight, it would be an abdication to the residents of Hillsborough. It is contrary to our master's plan, our town's master plan, and our rules and ordinances that are designed to keep us safe and encourage responsible development. We urge you, if you can, to appeal the Judge Shanahan's ruling. We expect you to fight for us. Uh, this, if this development is approved and built and is as designed, it will cause more flooding in my neighborhood and will cause more, home, more homes than before to flood. When this happens, we will be forced to take some type of legal action against whoever is involved and whoever makes that decision. But we don't want that to happen. We just want the right thing to be done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hickory Hill Road. I'm sorry. Meryl Bisberg, 4 Hickory Hill Road, Hillsboro. Um, so I, I should have brought the ordinance up, but I know the ordinance specifies that um, the developer is under no obligation to do a study. Does that mean that um, I, what I'm trying to understand is what happens next? So. Uh, it's been pretty clearly stated that there's problems with drainage. Is, is the planning board and the township willing to, to bear that study and do that study? With Will they make that commitment? So it, it's not a planning board issue. It would be a, it would be a governing body issue. So. But wouldn't the planning board have to recommend it? No. 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 Okay. So um, I guess what I'm saying, some of you are also on the township committee, is I would think at the least that um, we would want to execute on that study before we, you know, before we put a shovel in the ground. And I, what I was trying to figure out from the way it was stated was, was the developer saying, well, there may be a reason to have to do a study. We don't want to pay for it, but if the study comes, if a study is done and it shows that really you can't uh, build on that without, I don't know, some amount of expense, is the township going to be willing to undergo yeah. that expense or, or well, come at back? The end, at the end of the day, regardless of the outcome or the results of a study, <coughs> it is uh, of no interest to affordable housing, uh, to, to the courts, to fair share housing. Yeah, and I think that's what has been kind of, has been disseminated over the last number of years, I know. The deputy mayor, when he was mayor a couple of years ago at his town hall meeting, you know, really kind of stated, it doesn't matter. But, but 
it, 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 you know, regardless of infrastructure or anything, um, and, and clearly, you know, we have, you know, a st stricter DEP uh, requirements in the DEP, and the judge just said the gold standard is DEP. It's not going to have an impact at the end of the day. It, it, I, I don't. The issue will be, Merrill, and, and the this board cannot cannot make those decisions. It's not a discussion for us to have here. Um, and as I sit on the township committee, you know I cannot commit to uh, anything sitting here um, because I don't speak for the entire board. Um, but we will certainly have to look at alternatives uh, that might be possible. Um, but what they are, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm unable and, and frankly can't commit to, uh, to anything that, that might happen in the future. But yeah, regardless, it doesn't matter. You know, that the project will, well, has to be approved as is. Right, but I, I would think, it seems to me that the developer is even recognizing there's an issue by acknowledging No, uh, no I don't, I don't think that's true. They can put that in, for it. No, yeah. it's just an added cost, and their engineers and testimony but, but, said that they feel there was, no, there was no issue and it could handle it. So the judge took that for what it was worth, and and ruled against having to do the study. If he, if he really felt that was there was a necessary portion, he could have ruled for that. But he chose to take the testimony of the engineer and their license, saying that it didn't need to be done. I mean, yeah, to be clear, you know, and, and you can disagree with it, but the reality is, the application, like every application that comes before us, has to be engineered to not make the situation any worse. Now, I, you know, w down the road, if that happens, I, I can't, I, I, you know, I'm not an engineer, but the engineering has to be built so that the runoff does not, is not exacerbated by the project, that they have to deal with it within their own uh, contained water, uh, water management system. So, they you know, the applicant's not going to, uh, is not required to deal with uh, all the surrounding areas. That's not their. That's not their responsibility. They got to deal with the runoff on their own on their own application. If there's other issues, then we have to take a look at that. Okay. So when this this project was really settled between Fair Share Housing and the developer in May of 2019, is that right? And the township. And the township, right? And was there any discussion? since it hadn't gone through zoning and planning yet, was there any concern about flooding when that commitment was made? Of course. Okay. Was that expressed? Of course. There are times that I choose to make. Yeah. yeah. But, but again, so that's why it has to be engineered to... The proof. To, to not make the situation worse. Okay. Um, how is it that we do... That we make these agreements before we do zoning and planning. I, I'm just. I, I don't. Know if this Why is don't you go? You should go talk to your legislators That's and right. ask them that question. It's it's not about the legislators. It, it absolutely is about the legislator oh, right. because we have been mandated to do it through the court process, and there is no way that we can go through an application process until there's a a, a, a the zone set up. Okay, it, but in our in our master plan reexamination, there was discussion that, uh, and there was made mention of the fact that we had 40 odd zones, had to rezone, and we were going to have our um, affordable housing element plan in by the end of 2018. This was agreed to at the beginning of 2019. And I, you know... But, we, but, but, but you're, you're conflating multiple things, Armel, with all due respect. The, uh, the element plan is simply a, a matter of trying to figure out areas where we could have affordable housing. That, that, that's not the zoning related to an inclusionary zone. That can't happen until we know what is generally being proposed and what ultimately can be agreed to with fair share and the courts. Okay, well. Right. The, fa right. the fact that the, mass, that the housing element fair share plan says certain things had to be done is immaterial because we still have to amend the housing element fair share plan because the obligation, unlike the last two rounds, was completely, I won't say, I won't use one of the chairman's favorite words, arbitrary. 
was without definition. The courts litigated all the way to the Supreme Court twice the issue of whether or not what the numbers were and what the numbers covered. There was litigation as to whether the back numbers had to be covered. There was litigation as to how to calculate the numbers. For all intents and purposes, the courts are relying <coughs> upon a decision rendered by the assignment judge down in Mercer County on a formula because there is no absolute formula even under the court decision as to how many units any municipality is supposed to be obligated to do, which was different than round one and round two when everybody had assigned numbers from COA. So, and as, as Frank indicated, you can't zone an area and say, okay, and this is, by the way, exactly what the arguments were from 1998 until 2015. Town zoned, this was Fair Share Housing's biggest argument that I think they figured out in this round isn't true. Their argument always was that town zoned and deliberately zoned to make sure you couldn't build affordable housing. And what they found in the last six years is that isn't the case. What they found is we can zone for affordable housing and if either nobody builds it or doesn't want to build it, you can't have it. So this notion that towns are totally and solely <coughs> responsible for how affordable housing is created has now been at least in marginally debunked. So the same issue regards the master plan and the reexamination. We could zone all kinds of areas for affordable housing here in town, and if nobody will build it, or nobody wants it, or nobody's interested in putting it together, or putting all affordable on it, we're in violation because we haven't provided an opportunity for affordable housing. Read the Toll Brothers West Windsor case on that one. That was the big item. West Windsor had all kinds of places zoned. Nobody would build it, nobody was going to build it, and the answer was they were found non-compliant. The same thing exists here. It's how we got into the same issue the last round. You can't, the process is not set up to come before the planning or zoning board to see does this application work or not, and if it works, then we include it in the plan. It goes the opposite way because that's the way it's set up, and it's set up that way, and with all due respect, Merrill, it's set up that way because the legislature has ostensibly refused to address the issue for the last 30 years. And until they address it, they're going to leave it to the courts, and the courts don't care. The courts want it dealt with, the court want it addressed, and, and, and if you read Her Honor's decision, she basically said that the reason the Supreme Court stepped in in 2015 was because nobody else would do it. And they were left with no other choice but to do it. And now you get exactly what you wrought. Not just Hillsborough, everywhere else in the state. Hillsborough is a little more problematic because you still have too much vacant land and sewers. Less vacant land, no sewer is slightly different, but not much. So the fact that the master plan talks about this should have all been done by 2018 it was immaterial to the litigation. All right, well, it's still an issue. To me, it's still an issue of planning, but. It's still an issue with all of us, but that's not the way the process is. Okay. Um, when you um, uh, set up, when you negotiated the agreement with Fairshare Housing and Campus Drive in May of 2019, was the Environmental Commission involved at all? No, and they weren't parties to it. Nor was the Planning Board, nor was the Zoning Board. It was the Township, Fairshare Housing, the, the Interveners, the Special Court Master, and His Honor. They don't get to say this. The Environmental Commission, with all due respect to Mr. Julian and his colleagues, are advisory in nature to the Planning and Zoning Board, and the word is advisory. And they have no position in this. And even if we said it was environmentally problematic, it still doesn't have an impact on the situation. Nor does any other municipality. Right. This is not, this, I, I want everybody to say, this is not unique. Hillsborough is not special. All, I know you all believe that for this situation, it's not special. Every town in this county that was faced with this, every town in the state that was faced with this, had the same sets of issues. Okay. So I understand Hillsborough is not special. I believe this neighborhood, though, in our town is one of the worst places to build for whatever reason. And I think 
I mean, these people have been here since September 2019 mm -hmm. at every meeting. Oh, boy. You know. Um, so I think so, at some point we just have to, I guess the question is, what do we do to get out of it now? Well, I, I, I pay think, a lot of money to stay I know, here. but I think you saw what, what happened. You know, you this, 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 the planning board denied the application, not on a whim, as much as the judge may want to indicate that, but based on facts and very legitimate complaint, you know, uh, concerns. concerns. And you saw what the judge did. Right. He ordered the township fix your zoning ordinance and make the problem go away. I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just trying to lay it in layman's terms. He basically said, make it go away. So and he put a proverbial, I'm not, you know, you know what, to the head of particularly this town, the township committee. Well, also, I just want to add that we got sued as a planning board. Yes. Like, legal action was brought mm -hmm. against yes. us. Still outstanding right. We still have so. litigation going on you know, against, this, against this body, too. They are putting, they are throwing all the artillery out. And they have, they, they have the clout of the courts. And the appeals, where it goes from Superior, we go up to the Supreme Court. Pellet division. Pellet, and then the pellet will probably rule the same way, and then we go to the Supreme Court, and they're the ones who started this mess anyway. So it, it's, you know, there, there, there's, the, the judiciary does not want to oppose the Supreme Court. I mean, that is what's pretty clear what's happening. And again, with what's already been mentioned, and I'll do it for the hat trick, <clears throat> the fix is in the legislature which has abdicated its responsibilities and has done nothing. I haven't heard a peep out of them in the last three or four years to even, to even raise this issue. So, um, so I think that's where this is going to eventually get resolved. I mean, so. I would but, point but again, Mel, I, just to, I, 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 I recognize your point. I'm not, I'm not arguing, and, but what I'm trying to tell you is this body cannot address what you're asking it to do we have been t there, there's only one thing that can be done tonight they're at, we're asking to, to to recommend this ordinance that the judge has said well, you better recommend this ordinance back to the township committee at the end of the day the the ultimate resolution is 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 where that you know we need to finalize that ordinance and then the applicant will be back with another application or a revised application to fit it into the ordinance as as the judge has indicated we have to do. So then that will begin the process again of ensuring that how are you going to deal with the flooding issue and how are you going to deal with making sure that it's a, it's a safe community for uh, those that are involved and how is it going to affect the surrounding areas. But that's not what we're doing tonight. Tonight is simply to say the ordinance has to be amended to change the buffer and to uh, deal with the fact that you can't require the applicant to pay for the pay for the, uh, the the downstream study that's the extent of what this board uh, the jurisdiction that we have as of today so when this application was rejected at the end of, or when the uh, plan was um, voted down at the end of February there was a 45-day period, I guess, to re to um, report that, and we missed that. To report no. that. What was? What, what, the, what is that date? The current 45, you have 45 days to after the ruling to, to amend the ordinance. Right, but aren't some of those reasons the reasons that this um, this applicant, this developer, had some clout? Because I think no. in no, in November 2019. We hadn't moved on May yet, and so they uh, they went back to the judge during those times. I, I think they felt there was not there was a lack of um, taking action on some of the items, and they you know, were going, they were going to court, ma'am, irrespective of what the township committee did or didn't do in 2019. They believed they had a settlement agreement. They were entitled to their application as of right. And the governing body had an obligation to make sure it happened, even if the planning board didn't do the right thing. And that's exactly where we are right now. They filed a motion for litigants' rights within the time frame. The governing body took actions. 
we're dealing with them. If we really felt that we were neg negligent in our thing, we would have lost immunity. We did not. We're basically isolated in decision on this on this property only. So that's that's what we're dealing with today, as per the judge. So, um, so what will happen if you could just walk through a little bit? Let's say this thing gets passed tonight. Gets it doesn't. It doesn't the, 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 what will happen is the government. The, Planning board will recommend, hopefully, to the committee to adopt the ordinance. The committee will consider the ordinance for adoption, I believe, at the July 13th meeting. I believe that's correct. The yes. committee will hopefully adopt the ordinance. Otherwise, the, the consequences of failing to adopt will be significantly larger than the current consequences we are dealing with. Assuming that's the case, the applicant will come in with what is ostensibly an as of right application for no waivers, no variances. And basically the application that you all pretty much saw during 2020 and early 2021 and asked for approval and based on an as of right application they'll probably get that approval that's it so um, if there are problems during the planning process we have to turn to the town then to uh, what do you mean by problems during the planning process? If if um, if the issues with flooding come up, if the residents, I mean, are still vocal about it, it seems to me that the applicant pretty much had stated when they uh, during the last round during planning that whatever water they were adding to because of non-permeable surface or whatever they were handling in their application that the problems with the flooding or with the drainage that existed with, with the town prior to this application, which is what many of these people just reiterated again tonight. So I, all I'm saying is, I don't care whether this is in the Supreme Court or the legislature, if it's affordable housing, and by the way, it's only 23 units of affordable housing, you have to keep that in mind. Our town needs to make a commitment that they're not gonna build something that's crappy and that's gonna cause them more problems. And I'm just looking, I realize that the planning board can't make that guarantee. It's a it's an issue of the township committee in the end. No, it, no. Is, it isn't the township committee's decision. It is the planning board's decision in and of itself. The planning board will approve an application. It will be up to the it will be up to the developer and the internal department people in engineering and building construction to ensure that the, the that the, the application is built in conformance with what's approved. What happens afterwards is another issue that'll have to be addressed at the time. Yeah, or matters that are not related to the application have to be dealt with differently. Okay. Um, I guess that's all. Thank you. That's okay. okay. Grant Colmer, 144 Taylor Avenue. I'm oh, sorry, can you speak into the mic? Sure. Grant Colmer, 144 Taylor Avenue. Um, I'm hearing a lot of we can't, we have to, we're forced to. I guess I haven't heard any statements, and I would love if someone would be able to start a statement that is saying we're going to. And maybe it was we, we're going we're gonna to approve this, but going to do what for us as residents? And that's not why we're here today. Oh, but yeah. I would just love, I, I'll leave my comment here and I'll sit down, but if anybody would love to start out that statement, I think we would all be welcome to that information. I think that's what you're hearing here. And if you can, or if it's a township committee, where do I, where do I get that statement from? No. No, not from this board. That's on Which board? Can not I from the, board. the planning board can't, can't, uh, what, what this board will do tonight. I know what you're going to do. Yeah. That, that's okay. And, and then when the application comes in, we'll, we'll, Prove uh, or deny based upon what that comes forward, and ultimately, uh, we're going to make sure that the engineering is such that it, it doesn't create more problem. But if there's other issues that have to be dealt with, that's not that's not this board. Who? Which board do I? That's that, that's the town, that's the governing body which I sit on. As does I'll the talk to you guys there. Yes. So. <laughs> Yeah.
Any additional comments? Okay. <coughs> Motion to close. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any additional comments from the dais before I ask uh, Eric to outline our course of action? There is a motion, Mr. Chairman, to recommend to the Township Committee that they adopt Ordinance Number 2021-12, according to the determination rendered by His Honor and related land use obligations. Okay, and it'd be fair to say that that's the expectations of his honor mm -hmm. as to not to agitate him. I'd be more of a directive oh. as opposed to wishes. <laughs> I'm just trying to. I'd say probably more like an order. So, so right. I think it was, uh, there was no, uh, okay. it's pretty black and white. Right. So, so just, you know, again, just to repeat for everybody, this is just a recommendation. This is not adopting the ordinance. It's already been introduced by the Township Committee. They have their public hearing on July 13th. That's when, you know, final action will be taken on that. And then at some point down the line, the applicant or the campus associates will be resubmitting a new application. Um, and they'll have to be coming back before this board to present it at some future date. Is that summarized fairly? I would, I would suggest that the application that will come back before the board will look very, Similar. very, very familiar. Right. So I'm not expecting it's going to take them a long time to resubmit the. No. So. Okay. okay. Any final comments from anyone on the board? Okay. Hearing none, I'm going to go to a roll call, please. Huh? Oh, I thought we had. Oh, wait. No one. I, I'm sorry. I can't make. He can't make the motion. So, so I need a motion based on uh, Mr. Bernstein's uh, statement. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll second. Thank you. Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Wagner. Yes. Mr. Peason. Reluctantly, yes. Mr. Scobo. I have to recuse myself. Mr. Estag. Yes. Mr. Delcor. Yes. Mr. Romani. Yes. Mr. Julian. Yes. Mr. An unfortunate yes. Okay. So with that, uh, next. We do have a meeting, as mentioned at the beginning, for July 8th. It's probably going to take us. I would also suggest, Mr. Chairman, that we do not cancel the July 22nd meeting at this time in case we can't get a form from the July 8th meeting. All right. Okay. okay. So, and like I said, it's <clears throat> as I repeat, all of our meetings are now live, no more virtual. So, hopefully, at least five of us can make it next week. Like I said, it's only, it's only going to be five minutes, and then uh, we'll make also a decision on the 20, for the meeting of July 22nd. I suspect the July 8th meeting will be a little longer than five minutes if Mr. Wolfson appears and we have to deal with that. I don't, I don't know. I'll keep him. He's, got the, he, he's, he's just got to ask, ask us for one date, and then we're going to tell him what the ground rules are for, for scheduling him going forward. He's, he's had enough. Or not him, but his client has had enough opportunities. David, anything else to address? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Yeah, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. The mayor has moved it. So. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. See you next week.